Hello students, hopefully we are all doing well in the time of lockdown and pandemic, quarantine, whatever. We are back again for studying about the NEET 2021, our course target. For this particular interval, we are going for according to our chapters breakup and according to that, that plan, you can see that we are having to, uh, we are having motion to start. That is the kinematics, you know, better in proper terms of physics. And whenever we have kinematics to know, that from kinematics there is a very very important part that we need to solve about the uniform non-uniform motion and obviously the application of calculus vectors and projectile motion relative motion all these in this particular section as you can see from the chapter breakup we have uploaded we have provided in the app and the website you can see now from here today is the first day it's a commencing day for the chapter called kinematics that we are starting with uniform motion but see here we want to specify as uniform motion that not like s equals to vt you know now that is a distance equals to speed into time that is the main fundamental principle of uniform motion as we all know but the thing is that here we are not meaning that only that uniform speed or velocity we will discuss all kind of uniformity like uniform acceleration uniform retardation all kind of these things we will be discussing in this particular class so not only like uniform speed like we can see that whenever a particle is moving along a straight line so it's definitely its speed and velocity will be same because if its beginning is at point a and the finishing is at point b so when it is having its distance then surely it is having its displacement they are all same when it is moving along a straight line so along a straight line we know that these two are equal that is the distance and displacement are equal when we see the motion for the motion along a straight line so it's a very very important concept to discuss that when these two will be unequal most of the times they are unequal and we all know that distance in most of the cases is greater than the displacement so this is highly important for us the distance is most of the time greater than the displacement and always the displacement is the minimum shortest that is the shortest linear distance between the initial and final position of a moving object now when we think about uniform motion so uniform motion starts with this criteria you can see i have written on the board that is uniform motion with uniform speed and velocity we know about speed that speed equals to distance by time and velocity is actually which is called the displacement by time but when we think about the speed and when we think about the velocity we need to know one thing very much carefully that is whenever we think about the uniform speed motion or uniform velocity motion the motion uh, if it is with uniform speed that means the speed is only having the magnitude it doesn't have any proper direction so speeds direction can change at any point towards any direction so whenever there will be change in direction or change in particular orientation so there will be a uniform speed no issues because the direction is not going to hamper anymore but when we think about the velocity velocity is displacement by time and we know the displacement is always having a particular direction between initial and final position so when it is having a particular direction that means it's a vector so when we think about uniform velocity it can't change its direction it has to maintain its direction and it has to maintain its velocity and which is only possible if the particle is moving along a straight line so when the particle is moving along a straight line it will only maintain the uniform speed and also the uniform velocity so now if we think about any curvilinear motion suppose the particle is moving like along this curve so definitely this point a and point b the initial and final position so we can have their distance and displacement like the total path it has traveled from a to b whatever be the car whatever be the straight line here it is shown as a car so that's the total path between a to b will be the distance and that blue dotted line you can see on the board between a to b there is a linear shortest distance between a and b so that is a linear shortest distance between the initial and final position of the moving object so this is going to be your displacement in this particular occasion so displacement in most most of the time is less than distance or equal to distance it is only possible when the motion is along a straight line so this is very very important for all of us now from here when we are thinking about one particular idea 
that is when we think when we are thinking about the motion we have to be that much concentrating on the different types of motion first of all suppose we are considering suppose we are considering a motion of a car like one car is moving towards east with a speed of 40 km per hour or let it be it is it has traveled a distance 30 km and then it has traveled towards so this is starting from o towards east it has traveled 30 km then towards north it has traveled uh, 20 km let it be again towards east uh, let it be a point a it has traveled again a 20 km so we have to find out the displacement we have to find out the displacement of the car so how can we do it it's a very easy thing you know that you have to find out this displacement that is oa by more uh, meanwhile the distance covered by the car is so easy that you can easily find out by 30 plus 20 plus 20 it will make 70 you can see it quite often but the displacement how you can do it it is so important because here this trend, this direction and this distance we can find out by pythagoras but not if, not even this distance or this distance we know so we can't apply pythagoras directly over here so what we can actually do we can extrapolate this and you can drop a perpendicular so let it uh, these two are intersecting at a point b so if i can get now this kind of hypotenuse base and perpendicular so this is a right triangle which has a hypotenuse that is 20 kilometer uh, and uh, which is having a hypotenuse which i am going to find out by this 30 20 20 kilometers okay now see the entire thing here it is now 50 this base and the perpendicular is actually 20 kilometers so how can you get the displacement it is so easy so displacement will be here the displacement we are going to find here it is definitely root over 50 square plus 20 square so ultimately it is 2500 plus 400 so ultimately it is root over 2900 so it is 10 root over 29 you know very well that root, five, root 25 is 5 and root 36 is 6 so it's in between 5 and 6 so if you go for a calculation it will be around 5.6 like somewhat that so finally it is coming as 10 into 5.6 or 5.7 it's nearly uh, 56.78 or like something this much kilometer will be the displacement for this particular time we have so this will be the displacement for this particular problem so here we can find out the distance is every time is greater than displacement when the direction is changing from multiple straight lines to curves or whatever so when the direction is changing from one straight line to another one curve to another so definitely distance has to be greater than displacement now suppose there is a situation uh, we want to discuss over here suppose there come a situation like this that whenever we have motion we can feel that this kind of problem may arise so what kind of problem i am going to discuss here that suppose we are going for a circular motion so let us consider like this that uh, this is a circular path let it be and for this circular path suppose a b is the diameter so for this diameter a b this o is the center we can see and when this a b is the diameter and o is the center actually so finally what we can see the radius of the path let the radius of the path is 20 meter and one particle has started to travel from a via b it is coming back to a again suppose for traveling the one complete round traveling one complete round it takes 40 seconds it takes 40 seconds for one complete round so there can be a conceptual question very simple conceptual question that for 40 seconds if there is one complete round then after three minutes or two minutes 20 seconds after two minutes 20 seconds what will be the displacement so this is gonna be a very very important question that if for one complete round the particle or the object is taking 40 seconds time then after two minutes 20 seconds what will be the complete displacement of this particle so how we can do it it's a very very important question 
see first of all uh, the diameter the diameter of the circle the distance between a and b is surely 40 meter now first of all in 40 seconds it's traveling the whole path now in 2 minutes 40 seconds that is actually 2 into 60 plus 20 so it is 140 seconds so simply in 40 seconds you are traveling one complete round so in 140 seconds how many rounds will be there so it's 40 140 by 40 so it is 3.5 rounds so if we complete 3.5 rounds along this path you can see one complete round means again you are coming back to a second complete round you are again coming back to a so two complete rounds you have traveled so three complete rounds you are again coming back to a again now three and a half when you complete 3.5 rounds you have started from a so 0.5 means half of the round and you are going to b point so after three and a half rounds the displacement the displacement is actually the diameter of the circular path so that is 40 meter so this 40 meter will be the answer because this is the diameter you are traveling after a year you are having the displacement in the total traveling path after 3.5 rounds which is taking 140 seconds or 2 minutes 20 seconds time and that you can see from the diagram so this is a very very gentle application of this kind of knowledge and this kind of applications where you can have curvilinear motion but your displacement is always going to be a linear or uh, along a straight line now see from this particular point of view or this particular approach we can uh, ask for one particular type of question like uh, where linear motion is accompanied by a circular motion as well as but the motion is along a straight line only suppose there is a on this horizontal road there is a wheel which is uh, circular obviously and which is touching the road at a point and let that point be p the ground touching point of the wheel is p and obviously this is the center and this is the radius of the wheel that is r now suppose the wheel is performing one half rotation let the wheel is performing one half rotation if it is performing one half rotation then we have to find out the displacement of the point p after this half rotation we have to find out the displacement of the point p suppose if it is a full rotation full rotation when the wheel goes for a full rotation it travels a path which is equal to the circumference of the wheel perimeter there is a circle wheel is a circle so its perimeter is definitely going to be 2 pi r where r is the radius of the circle so that means half rotation when it is having half rotation what is the linear displaced linear distance traveled by the wheel that is pi r pi r means half rotation means the half circumference so half rotation when the wheel is traveling so the wheel has a displacement that is how much pi r so wheel wheel is having a displacement that is pi r but see very carefully when if the wheel completes a full rotation then the position of the p point will never change because at p point the wheel is touching the ground when it completes a full rotation the p point will come back to the original position with a linear displacement but here as it is a half rotation so position of the point p will be reversed so position of the point p is taken vertically up and when we see it you can see that p point is vertically toward displacement from the road so that is the diameter of the wheel and now this is the position of the p point and you can see the displacement of p point is pp dash and you can see it's a simple pythagoras right angle triangle where this displacement is simply pi r and this is 2 r so this pp dash if i want to find out it is simply root over 2 r whole square plus pi r whole square so r is taken common so it is 4 plus pi square so this is the displacement we can have for point p when it is having a half rotation and when it is uh, changing the time with respect to the displacement
So from this particular problem we have seen that how the linear motion can be accompanied by circular motion also and that can reflect uh, that can be reflected in the result of displacement and direct distances. Now from here we are directly going to the next type of problem regarding the average velocities and average uh, speeds uh, related problem. So if we are going from here we need to discuss little bit on that particular section of average velocity. We know the formula of average velocity what was that? Children, if I, were, if I was supposed to asking you, it was a simple question from my side that what is average velocity or average speed? So average speed is the total distance by total time. Yes, obviously when you need to calculate average speed, when definitely you are traveling unequal distances with equal time. So different different times or equal times but you are changing your distances. So in equal time or in different time, whenever your distance and displacements are going to be changed, your velocities and speeds will be changing with time and definitely you are going to have some average. So that average speed and average velocity we need to calculate. Suppose one question is given like uh, from New Delhi, one train is starting and it is going towards Mumbai and uh, during the go, during the travel, so when it goes from New Delhi to Mumbai, suppose its speed, its speed was 60 kilometer per hour. But when it returns, suppose its speed is 50 kilometer per hour. So simply the question it is asked here that what is the average speed of the train in coming and returning, in going and returning, so going and coming back. So for New Delhi to Mumbai and back, so this total entire path, what is the average speed the train is having that is going to be asked here and that is asked here and how we can do it. Let's take the distance between New Delhi and Mumbai as x kilometer let. Let the distance between New Delhi and Mumbai as x kilometer. Now suppose the time taken while going to New Delhi to Mumbai is t1 and when coming back to Mumbai to New Delhi it's t2. Now what about t1? We all know it very carefully that time is equal to uh, distance by speed when the distance is x and the time is 60 and it should be x by 60 hour and when it is coming back from Mumbai to New Delhi this time is nothing but t2 so it is x by 50 hour so finally what we can find out the average speed the formula is total distance by total time so the total distance by total time and how we can find out this one that is very very important for us that is total distance is x plus x that is 2x divided by total time is x by 60 plus x by 50 and if we take this 2x and x common so this x to 1 by 60 plus 1 by 50 finally so x x going out so this much actually kilometer per hour so is 60 and 50 is LCM we have taken what will be the LCM in 60 and 50 so definitely 10 will come uh, to play a big role and 6 into 5 it should be 300 so when it is 300 it is 5 plus 6 it's going up to so that is 2 into 300 by 11. So ultimately it is 60 by 11. So it is 5.45. It's 54. So you can see very often here that is 2 into uh, 300. So 600, 600 by 11. 600 by 11 is uh, it's definitely it's going to play a big role. That is 54.5 something this kilometer per hour. So this will be the average speed when the train is going from New Delhi to Mumbai and coming back from Mumbai to New Delhi. So this is a very very important thing we are going to discuss that here somebody may can take like 60 plus 50 by 2. It is not like that. It is changing the direction. So the average speed or average velocity cannot be taken like that in only average because here the distance and displacement is definitely changing the direction when the train is coming back. So this we need to con be concerned with when we are calculating this just like this the same type of problem you may be asked that suppose a particle is moving between two points a and b definitely and the first half of the path is traveled by with a velocity v1 first half of the path and this is the second half of the path so first half of the path is traveled by velocity v1 and the second half is traveled by velocity v2 
then how what is the average velocity what is the average velocity uh, in this particular case see let us consider the first half as the total distance x and the second half as the total distance x also so we should get one thing for sure that how much time we are taking here let it be t1 and for this let it be t2 so what about t1 this is surely x by v1 and what about t2 it is surely x by v2 so if i want to have the average velocity here so it has to be the total displacement that is x plus x 2x divided by x by v1 plus x by v2 like this so ultimately whenever we have this kind of orientation so ultimately we can write it like 2x here it is x common v1 v2 will be lcm so it is v1 plus v2 so finally xx goes out it becomes 2 v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 but uh, students you must know one thing that in these particular cases sometimes it can be like here i have given the equal half so it may be 1 by 3 distance with v1 like 2 by 3 distances uh, of the total path with v2 or half of the total path with v1 1 fourth is with v2 next 1 fourth with v3 it can go like this so it is a so familiar problem to us for any kind of competitive exam we need to remember this kind of concept because we know very well that all the types of problem we are solving not everything will come but it is a mixed bag of uh, open sea so anything can come from anywhere and we should be prepared for all type of questions from each of the section we are going through now as we are moving with only uniform speed and velocity this kind of cases now we are moving towards for the basic equations of motions under acceleration and we all know that the equation of acceleration is what basically it is acceleration means the rate of increase of velocity and simply it is rate of change but still when we think about uniform acceleration it is v minus u by t and from here you got the very famous equation v equal to u plus at the distance traveled equation ut plus half at square again velocity displacement relation v square equals to u square plus 2 ways then one more very very important equation like what is the distance traveled in nth second that is highly important and you know this formula very well that u plus half a into 2n minus 1 this is actually a difference this is a difference between these two formula here you have the distance after t seconds in t seconds how many distance you are traveling but here this distance you are traveling on nth second on a particular second that means suppose you are traveling for total n seconds and you have covered a distance sn now suppose you have traveled a distance from n minus 1 second and you have traveled a distance s minus 1 so this sn minus s minus 1 this is actually known as the distance we can see that is s nth so this s nth or distance traveled in nth second is u plus half a into 2t minus 1 so these are the all equations we use when the particle is having acceleration if the particle is having retardation when the particle is having retardation so definitely its velocity is decreasing with time so when we think about a retarding motion or retarded motion with when we think about a retarded motion so every time we will write like that v equals to u minus a t s equals to u t minus half a t square and v square equals to u square minus 2 a s so these are the important equations we have for our retarded motion condition so now one question we haven't discussed in the case of dimension because I intentionally did not discuss that in dimension because that time we haven't studied motion from our side. Now when we think about this equation can you please tell me children that if you try yourself and get back to us that is this equation is dimensionally correct or not this snth. If you go for the conventional dimensional process you will get this dimension with velocity 
that is L T to the power minus 1 half is taken off A into N actually A means acceleration. So, it is L T to the power minus 2 into N means time here. So, it is T. So, it is simply it becomes L T to the power minus 1 plus L T to the power minus 1. So, it is L T to the power minus 1. But if you think apparently this is S nth. So, this is the distance traveled in n second. So, it has to be looking like it has to be a distance. So, how it is matching on both sides and how you can apply it in physically. So, it is definitely matching because this is not a distance ordinary. This is a distance on n second. n second means it is a particularly it is a distance traveled in particularly one second. 1 second means in unit second and the distance traveled in unit second we know it as a speed or velocity so its dimension is also lt to the power minus 1 so when we have this lt to the power minus 1 on both side so dimensionally these two equ these equations both sides are equal when they are equal we must say that these dimensions are uh, matching on both sides so this equation is physically dimensionally correct so this kind of equation this kind of questions we can anytime face and we we can anytime discuss that doesn't matter it is in dimension chapter or it is in motion or kinematic so we need to remember all these equations very well now let us start with a very simple problem to discuss like suppose one bullet one bullet if it is fired with a speed u and travels a distance x bullet is traveled with a speed u travels a distance x through a wooden block that means it is definitely getting retarded and its velocity becomes v which is definitely less than u and again it is further traveled for a distance y and its velocity becomes zero that means it stops so we have to find out we have to find out the ratio of u and v in this particular numerical. So, in this particular numerical, we have to find out the ratio of u and v. So, this is a very, very important type of problem. Very simple problem actually. When the velocity is decreasing, you can see. So, definitely we can conclude that here the displacement, that is the displacement we are having, that is for these velocities and all. So, definitely it is under retardation because the wooden block is going to play a resistive nature. So, it is definitely going to apply a resistive force on the bullet. So, definitely its velocity is decreasing. So, first equation if I write it is simply v square equals to u square minus 2x. Now, the wooden block's parameters are not changing. So, the retardation through the wooden block is entirely uniform. We can assume that here we are studying uniformity of the motion. So, here you can have that 2 a x 2 a x equals to u square minus v square you can take it as equation 1. Now on the second case the velocity becomes 0 and here you can take u as v and v as 0 and the displacement as y. So 0 equals to v square minus 2 a y or 2 a y equal to v square this is becoming equation number 2. So from here if I compare equation uh, if I divide equation 1 and 2 uh, in this particular thing like 2ax by 2ay equals to u square minus v square by v square. If you do it like this 2a 2a goes out it is x by y equal to u square by v square minus 1. So, 1 goes on other side it is u square by v square equals to x plus y by y. So, u by v ultimately becomes root over x plus y by y. So, this is the ultimate answer for us thus root over x plus y by y. So, this can be a very very important type of question when you need to apply the concept of retardation, the concept of retarding motion. So, when the velocities are changing, when the accelerations are uniform, the retardations are uniform but you can apply this kind of formula to get into the original substances. Now, from here one question can also be asked like this that if a bullet same type of approach if a bullet is fired with a velocity u and it has traveled a distance x through a wooden block again and now it has lost 1 by nth 
fraction of its initial velocity lost 1 by nth of its initial velocity then the simple question is that that after how much distance the bullet will be stopped completely so we have to find out the stoppage distance of the bullet so what will be the stoppage distance of the bullet so this is another case of losing velocity so there is retardation simply that we can't ignore there is retardation so when there is retardation again we are going to have those equations with minus like v equal to u minus at s equal to ut minus half at square and v square equals to u square minus 2 as here the distance uh, is given x the initial velocity is u the velocity v here after traveling a distance x is u minus u by n so if you do it like this u taken common it's n so it's n minus 1 it is like this so v square equals to you can write u square minus 2x so 2x on taken on one side if i write 2x on one side what we get actually it is u square minus v square so it's u square taken common so 1 minus it is n minus 1 whole square by n square it is like this because i am taking it common finally so what is actually we are having that is 2ax equals to u square by n square so it is n square minus n square plus 2n plus 1 like this because plus 2n minus 1 like this so we are removing the brackets and n square n square goes so finally it is like u square by n square into 2n minus 1 so this is actually 2ax now from here 2a will become u square into 2n minus 1 by n square x so this will become the 2a we will utilize it later how we can utilize it suppose from this v the final velocity that is the stopping velocity that velocity becomes 0 and let the distance we need to find that is a stoppage distance and that is y and how we can find out this stoppage distance over here the same equation we will be working with once again that is v square equals to u square minus 2 ax but here x v these things will change so here v dash square equals to v square minus 2 a y so this is the stopping distance y that we are going to find out now here this is 0 so v square equals to 2 a y once again so y equals to simply v square by 2 a now you have one thing you have your v what is that v you have this one so if you can put it there it will be simply how much it is u square into n minus 1 whole square by n square divided by u square into 2n minus 1 divided by n square into x so u square u square goes out n square n square goes out x is taken up so it will be x into n minus 1 whole square by 2n minus 1 so this is your final answer that after traveling this much distance so far the bullet will finally comes to rest so this is the stoppage distance we were looking for in this particular problem so see here from this particular angle this particular approach we can find out by applying the formula of uh, normal uh, uniform uniformly accelerated motion or uniformly retarded motion by applying these formulas together so it is a very very important application for all the cases that we are going for just like a simple application we can go for another application from here like suppose in a particular problem it is given that after fifth second after fifth second of the motion that at fifth second of the motion a particle has traveled 25 centimeter and on the seventh second of the motion it has traveled 33 centimeter so it, it you are asked that after 10 seconds what is the distance traveled and what is the velocity acquired so after 10 seconds what is the distance traveled and what is the velocity acquired here it is told that at fifth second of the motion at fifth second of the motion the distance traveled is 25 centimeter at seven second of the motion the distance traveled is 33 centimeter so after 10 second what will be the distance traveled and what will be the velocity 
of the moving particle after 10 seconds so this is a very very important type of question because here you need to use lot of types of equation here you need to use the n second equation here you need to use the final velocity equation and here you need to use the ordinary distance or displacement equation so if i go for that n second formula it is simply u plus half a into 2t minus 1 if i go for it that's first time it is for fifth second and you can simply write that u plus half into 2 into 5 minus 1 equals to 25 so how much you are getting it is 10 minus 1 it is 9 so it is a u plus half a into 2 into n minus 1 so it is simply u plus 9 a by 2 equals to 25 this is equation 1 again for the second time it is u plus half a into 2 into 7 minus 1 it is 33 so it is u plus 14 minus 1 13 so it is 13 a by 2 equals to 33 so this is equation number 2 so from here you can easily subtract 2 from 1 so if i subtract 2 minus 1 then what we will get it is u plus 13 a by 2 equals to 33 by u plus uh, subtracting u plus 9 a by 2 equals to 25 so if we subtract it is simply u u going and it is 13 a by 2 minus 9 a by 2 so it is simply 13 minus 9 that is 4 a by 2 equals to 8 so how much it is so a becomes 4 centimeter per second square so this is the acceleration we are getting the with which the particle is moving now from any one of the one or two equation if i put this acceleration over there so it is u plus 9 by 2 into 4 equals to 25 so 2 and 4 goes out 9 and 18 so u becomes 25 minus 18 so finally the initial velocity we got that is 7 centimeter per second now the job is done because we need to find out the displacement or the distance after 10 seconds and the velocity after 10 seconds so after 10 seconds what is the formula for distance it's a simple distance formula we have that s equals to ut plus half at square here u means 7 into 10 plus half into 4 into 10 square so finally it is 70 plus it is 2 into 100 so 200 so finally it is 200 centimeter that is the distance traveled after 10 seconds so after 10 seconds the total distance traveled is 270 centimeter again what about the velocity if i think about the velocity velocity is u plus 80 so velocity is u plus 80 if i write u is how much u is 7 so 7 plus a is what 4 and t is 10 so it's 7 plus 40 so finally velocity is coming 47 centimeter per second so see here you have to apply not only the nth second distance formula you have to apply the basic rules of elimination of solving an equation simultaneous you have to apply the equation for the accelerated motion distance and you have to apply the accelerated motions velocity formula so quite often this kind of problems are so important for us and whenever we do apply this kind of problems for our regular purposes this makes our work easier like a simple machine we are making our work easier by applying this formula so reconnecting with the proper formulas in proper numericals is a first job to do to do the numericals in physics correctly we have to be reconnecting with the proper formula in proper time in proper consequences so that is mostly important now from here we are going to solve another very important type or consequence of motion that is known as chasing problem which is so important for us and that is related to this particular equations only chasing problem there can be a lot of type of chasing problems we have so one thing for sure the first case for the chasing problem that we are going to discuss the chasing problems so this chasing problems case one so we are starting with the first case that is case one so this case one how we can discuss it suppose there are two bodies or two objects two moving bodies something like this initially both at rest and they are moving on a same horizontal line and suppose this one this one this is body number two and this is body number one 
this body number 2 starts to move with the acceleration and to catch the body number 2 but uh, body number 1 starts to move with a uniform velocity so we need to find out the uniform velocity first of all we need to find out the uniform velocity and we need the time to catch up after what time the body 1 will be catching up the body 2 will be able to catch up with body 2 so how we can get it this is a kind of chasing problem and for this kind of problem we need to remember the distance between the two bodies initially they were separated by a distance d and that is not going to be changed that is a constant distance so if the body one has to catch up body two it has to make up the distance in between them that is d then it can only catch up that how much distance it has traveled the body two in time t let the time is t so in time two how much is the distance traveled by this particular object is surely half a t square because u is 0 for both of them at rest initially so at rest both of the bodies uh, are having 0 initial velocity so half a t squared this is the distance traveled by the second object but if the first object has to catch it the first object is covering a distance that is vt because it is moving with uniform velocity so in t time this distance is vt but if the first one wants to catch up the uh, second one this vt must be equal with this make, making up distance this forfeited distance plus the distance traveled by the second object d plus half a t square so if i multiply both side by 2 it's 2 vt equals to 2d plus a t square so finally it is a t square minus 2 vt plus 2d equals to 0 it is a simple sridhar acharya equation where because t is a real number so if t is the real number for this Sridhar Acharya equation, if I want to have the real value of t, the basic equation of t here will be the 2v plus minus, it is minus b plus minus root over b square, that is 4v square minus 8ad by 2a. So this will be simply the value of time t and according to the situation, according to the situation, the conditions of v, a and d, uh, the favorable time which is not negative because time has to be a real number so as it has to be a real number so time must be a real solution it, if it is one to have a real solution then this discriminant we know this discriminant must be greater than equals to zero and the discriminant here you can see here it is so d greater than equals to zero means we know the famous one the famous concept b square greater than equals to 4ac and if we follow b square greater than equals to 4ac it is 4v square greater than equals to 8ad now 4 4 goes uh, this 4 and 8 goes for 2 so v becomes greater than equals to root over 2ad so this is the condition if the second one runs with this uniform velocity then it will be able to catch the second one so this is a very very important question for us the chasing problem see how we can see this type of question in exam suppose one train has started to move from the platform with a speed of uh, 2 meter with an acceleration of 2 meter per second square now from the nearest door of the last of uh, a nearest compartment of the train a person was at 9 meter lagging from the train now he also starts traveling with a velocity v and with how much velocity he must run such that he will be somehow be able to catch the train let at time t this person will be able to catch the train so if i go for the normal approach so simply in time t it will travel a distance vt vt is simply half a t square plus this distance i can take it as d right so vt here vt equals to half into 2 into t square plus 9 simply so it's again a Sridhar Acharya equation of time that t square minus vt plus 9 equals to 0 again for t to be real for t to be real the time is always a real number we know that we must know that v square greater than equals to 4 into 9 into 1 so v square greater than equals to 36 so v is greater than equals to 6 so 6 meter per second so if the person starts running with a speed of 6 meter per second then only he will be able to catch the train somehow now if i directly apply this formula keeping all these parameter fixed in 9 meter is d 
a for 2 meter so you can directly get 2 into 2 into 9 it is again coming as 6 meter per second if we go for the conventional method we can see that 6 meter per second again if we go for the direct method that you can apply directly here merely you can take a equals to 2 d equals to 9 and you can simply use the formula root over 2 a d so 2 into 2 into 9 it will become 6 so the answers are matching in both the cases so you can directly apply these conditions of chasing problem the case one we have studied when the first one is moving with acceleration the second one is moving with uniform velocity and we can change the track how that we can use the reverse option that first one is moving with uh, uniform velocity and the second one is moving with uniform acceleration then what will be the condition for uh, that what with what acceleration should the lagging body the uh, body number one must travel to catch up just catch up the body number two now let's consider the second consequence that is case two where the second one is moving with acceleration and the first one is moving with a velocity so here so you need to find out this acceleration here so definitely the distance traveled by this object how much it is traveled by this object that should be half at square and which is equal to vt plus d naturally to make up all these things now if i multiply by 2 on both side it is at square equals to 2 vt plus 2 d now at square minus 2 vt plus 2 d or minus 2d if it is precisely minus 2d it is 0 so if this equation holds right then you can clearly see one thing see first of all we need to have the acceleration so we can have the velocity also that with how much velocity it is traveling how much acceleration it is traveling so if i want to have this acceleration you can simply take the all the things on other side so if the velocity is asked there is a different story from this acceleration you can have the time also that after how much time it will be able to catch up it's a quadratic equation that time you need to solve the time so if you think about the time how much it is coming it is 2v plus minus 4v square plus here 4 into a into 2d so 4v square plus 8ad by 2a so this is this will be the time in this particular sense but if i think about the acceleration to find out so at square equals to 2vt plus 2d like this so if i divide it by t square so acceleration will become 2v by t plus 2d by t square so this will be the ultimate thing for this particular action that is acceleration equals to this so if the second one is moving with acceleration and the first one is moving with velocity in the same time if you want to have this particular condition you can have that acceleration is will be this with this acceleration the body must travel to catch up the second one now if i go for the third case of this discussion if i go for the third case of this discussion and how will how we can deal that the third case of this discussion case number three when you have on the same horizontal road again you have the two bodies once again and they are at initially at rest no issues they are initially at rest u equals to zero now from here from here when we are thinking about their motion let the first one and the second one their distance is obviously d once again and the first one is trying to catch the second one when the second one has started to move with a velocity v2 and this one has started to move with a velocity v1 so we need to find out the catching condition that after how much time so you can be asked that after how much time you will be able to catch that if you are the first object you will be able to catch the second one so from here that equation should be as these velocities are uniform so the distance traveled by the first object is v1t and the second object is v2t and the in a, at a time t it is uh, the uh, first object is being able to catch the second one it's v1 t equals to v2 t plus d so naturally if i take the t common it is v1 minus v2 equals to d so the time here it should be d by v1 minus v2 definitely if it wants to catch v1 wants to catch with a velocity running v2 so here 
definitely v1 is going to be greater than v2 so the time should be a real number if this equation is valid and if i want to have the velocity how i can get it that v1 t equals to v2 t plus d if i divide it by t on both side it is v2 plus d by t so this will be the case number three application for chasing problem so what about the case number four if i go for the case number four case number one case number two case number three is done now the last case that is a case number four we need to uh, study from this particular case of chasing problem so what is that case number four if i want to study from here that what is that case number four let's see from this particular case number four we need to have one very important thing that is this object that object number one again this object object number two they are having a distance in between d and it is traveling with an acceleration a1 and this is traveling with an acceleration a2 and seeing this object moving it has started to move initially they were having zero velocities that they are starting from rest so here also we will have the equation half a1 t square because at time t that we also get find out half a t square equals to half a 2 t square plus d now if i take it on one side it is half t square is common and if half t square is common simply here a 1 is greater than a 2 half t square common means it is a 1 minus a 2 equals to d so if i want to get the time here it will be root over 2 d by a 1 minus a 2 this will be the time of catching of the first object when it will be just be able to catch up the second object and if i think about the second one this equation if i divide it on both side by t square so simply it is going on to half and if i multiply this half or two on both side it will be a1 t square equals to a2 t square plus 2d now if you divide on both side by t square this a1 will a1 will be a2 plus 2d by t square so this is these are the formulations that we can start from this particular thing so here we need to find out the acceleration here we need to find out the acceleration for the first object who is chasing the second object and after how much time it will be able to uh, catch the second one which is also traveling with acceleration so we have started the four cases on chasing problem number one when we uh, when we uh, discuss the first case when the first object is running with a uniform velocity to catch the second object which is running with uniform acceleration from rest now the second case arises when the first object is running with acceleration and the second one is starting from rest is moving with uniform velocity then the third, third case came that is the both of the object are running with uniform velocity but the first one must be moving with a greater velocity otherwise it will not be able to catch up the second one and the fourth case that actually came that the first object and second object both are running with very uh, constant but different accelerations but the first object's acceleration has to be greater than the second object but the thing is that here you need to find out the time of catching and you need to find out the acceleration of the first object with which it must move to catch up the second one so here students we have successfully discussed the cases of chasing problem now from here we need to travel towards an heisenbergian problem that is uncertainty problem we know about from atomic structure that heisenberg told about uncertainty problem so in that uncertainty problems what was the main thing that the particle can travel along any path but it has to be uh, traveling the minimum path minimum path distance it must travel to uh, make it happen to complete the motion within minimum time so here also we are going to discuss the heisenbergian problems right now and we'll discuss about two or three cases on this such that our uniformity of the motion that we started in this very class very first class on neat on kinematics will be successfully completed so suppose i am uh, giving you a situation what heisenberg used to discuss in this manner that is let us have a square let us have a square which is having at its four corners four different observers or four different persons at four corners of the square 
and let the length of each side of the square is L and the observers can move along the sides with a velocity V that A towards B along the side its velocity is V not any other direction only along the side its velocity can V so from B to C along BC side its velocity can be V this also and this also now the thing is suppose one situation arises like this that the observers have started moving towards each other the observers have started moving towards each other like A has started moving towards B B has started moving towards C C has started moving towards D and D has started moving towards A now my question is that that when a, B, C, D, all these four observers will meet together. Where? Where they will meet together and when they will meet together. So we need to find out the meeting distance that are at the meeting spot when they will meet together. That where, what is the position of their meeting? That is the meeting point. And the second question is what? The second question is that when they will meet. That is another important question that when they will meet. So when they will meet means here when we think about their motion c a to b b to c naturally it comes to our mind that they are moving along the sides but see if they moving along the sides with the same velocity then no question arises of their meeting so it is only true that if they traveling with some any other direction but somehow a is pointing towards b b is pointing towards c c is pointing towards d and d is pointing towards a so suppose it is moving like this so A is moving towards B, B is moving towards C, C is moving towards D and D is moving towards A. So if this kind of things happen, so A, B, C, D can take any of the possible paths. But here we need to travel along the shortest distance. So if we think like that, if we want to move like a shortest distance to meet up after the minimum time, then we should not concentrate all about this we should concentrate on only one particular idea that the meeting point will be the intersecting point of the two diagonals of the square how if we draw the two diagonals of the square so you can see this point o this is the intersecting point of the two diagonal this point o and you can see now A is moving along AO, B is moving along BO, C is moving along CO and D is moving along DO. If it is happening like this, so at point O, what is going to be happened? At point O, we can have the very, very important concept that at point O, they are definitely taking the same time to travel because along each side they are having same velocity so along each of the directions AO, BO, CO and DO they will take same time to reach so after time t they will definitely meet together C A is moving towards B because B and A are moving towards the same point B is moving towards C C is moving towards D and D is moving towards A so this is the natural situation to happen now what are these distances AO, BO CO and DO this is nothing but the half of the diagonal so we know the diagonal of a square is root 2a by 2 here the half of the diagonal so it is a by root 2 simply so a by root 2 distance has to be traveled by the observer a observer b observer c observer d now the time so this time will be how much the distance traveled is a by root 2 now the what about the velocity if they would have been traveled along each side of the square their velocity was v now look at this angle, this angle is theta. So along each of this direction, the velocity vector will be simply, we know this vector resolution. So this will be V cos theta. Now if it is T equals to A root 2 by, so this velocity is V cos theta. Now you know simply that this theta is how much the total angle, this is totally is 90 degree. So you know very well this theta is how much, it is 45 degree. So it is A by root 2 by v cos 45 degree you know very well it will be a by root 2 by v by root 2 so root 2 root 2 goes out 
so this will be the meeting time for this particular problem that after a time a by v now here the side length is given as l so finally it is l by v so after a time l by v the object uh, the observers that is a b c d they are pointed observers they will be meeting at a point which is the intersecting point of the two diagonals and it is, it is at the minimum distance from each corner of the square and they are definitely going to meet after in same time that is l by v because they are moving with same velocity along these directions now from here again we can solve this particular case for a uh, for a triangular case for a case of equilateral triangle we can also solve it suppose the equilateral triangle is also having the side length l there are three observers a b and c so they are definitely going to meet in the intersecting point of the three median that is called the centroid so if they want to meet at the centroid so these lengths are equal so you know very well this length this AO BO and CO whatever will be this length if the, all the lengths are L and along the sides their velocity can be V so how they can travel like this see A to B if the velocity is V B to C the velocity is V and here also the velocity is V here the angle is theta and you know very well the angle to be 30 degree here so AO BO CO this is not actually the median we know that centroid divides each median by a ratio 2 is to 1 so by that ratio only it is 2 by 3 into the median length that is root 3 l by 2 so root 3 root 3 goes up it is l by root 3 so we know very well this is l by root 3 now time is what so time should be again that l by root 3 by v cos theta so this is the meeting time once again so it is l by root 3 by v cos theta so if it is l by root 3 by v cos theta from this particular problem that we can have l by root 3 so divided by v cos 30 degree and what is the value of cos 30 degree we all know it cos 30 degree value is root 3 by 2 so this root 3 root 3 goes in the denominator 2 goes up so time in this particular problem will be 2l by 3v where for the rectangle for the square problem it was l by v now for this time problem it will be 2l by 3v so this is one of the kinds of problem we can have called heisenbergian problem where you have plenty of paths to travel but you have to go through the minimum distance path to take the minimum time so this is actually called the uncertainty heisenbergian problem because here the path routes what should be taken that is uncertain but we need to consider on the one particular fact the path distance must be minimum to have the minimum displacement that is along a straight line so if i can follow a straight linear path then the obviously time will be also be minimum and less the time consuming will be the process it's always be our desired one so here it can be a some problems we have from kinematics from uniformity of the motion when you can have chasing problem and this kind of problems are known as heisenbergian problems now moreover for uniform motion we have successfully completed the idea but here uh, as we all know we will discuss it in the next class but till we want should notice one particular idea or concept for this particular thing that we know very well that if we differentiate the displacement we will get velocity if we differentiate velocity we will get acceleration but the important thing that we are focusing here that we must concentrate on that one type of problem I am giving an introduction before going into the next class that is on non-uniformity of the motion that is on application of calculus but for that type of motion suppose you are asked in any situation that the equation of a moving particle is s equals to half vt the equation of a moving particle is s equals to half vt and you are asked that what type of acceleration the particle is having the what type of acceleration of the particle is having option a increasing option b decreasing option c infinite and option d constant see we are studying uniform motion that means its acceleration will be constant it's not like about wild guessing now the thing is that why I have introduced this problem because just we know the equation of s equals to half vt 
sometimes the students even us we commit some mistake that it's just like uh, along this equation so we don't need to concentrate on any other things we can simply say it's a constant acceleration no uh, zero acceleration because s equals to vt that means it's uniformity so there is no acceleration but here no zero acceleration is given in the option so how we can deal with this situation that is a very very important task see for this type of equation we can do one simple thing to start with that we know the product of two functions differentiation right that we need to remember this formula that ddx of uv equals to u dv dx plus v du dx from here if i want to differentiate this the ds dt equals to here if you take this two on this side so 2 ds dt equal to v dt dt plus t dv dt it's a simply a according to this product of two functions formula now 2 ds dt means 2 v equals to v plus t into dv dt means a acceleration now if you take this v on this side it is v equals to at like this it's so obvious that for mcq purpose you can directly write if you compare with the equation v equal to u plus at if it starts from zero so it is at you know that acceleration is uniform so you can clearly write this will be the correct option that is constant but if you want to make it the concluding statement that dv dt from the proper ways that dv dt equals to a dt dt that will be one into a plus t into da dt now a dt dt this will be one this is also a so this is a equals to a plus t into da dt now a minus subtraction will be zero so t into da dt that is also zero now t time can never be zero therefore da dt must be zero now when the differentiation of a quantity becomes zero that actually means that acceleration is surely constant when the acceleration is constant there is a fourth option you have here so you can easily do it like this so this is a type of problem uh, see here again we got uniform acceleration so your uniformity and the chapter breakups concept that's uniform motion is not violated so now from here we are going towards the next case that is another this type of problem suppose it is given like the velocity it is having this type of approach that root over 49 plus x so you have to find out the acceleration this much meter per second you have to find out the acceleration so simple thing here x is the displacement so sometimes this kind of problem are there where v is a function of x for that we need to have the acceleration like a equals to dv dt we know but we can adjust it by dv ds into ds dt so dv dt this ds ds uh, we can adjust it so ds dt will be v and it will be acceleration will be v dv ds so this is another formula we can directly apply here that here acceleration may be will be v dv dx but in our need time there will not be that much sufficient time to do the squares and the differentiation severally so we can do little bit easier this process we can do little bit easier how just make it square if you make it square what will be the change here if you make a simple square of this equation this type of format only remember for not all the types of problem for this type of format only so it will be v square equals to 49 plus x so if you compare this equation with v square equals to u square plus 2 as you can compare this as x with s so you can simply see here u, is, u square is 49 so that means u will be 7 meter per second simply one answer it does not asked even you can be asked from this problem and the second thing here the 2a 2a means how much it is 49 plus x so 2a equals to 1 if we compare so a equals to half that is 0 0.5 meter per second square so for this kind of problems are always there and in the next class we will be surely operating on this kind of situations mark multiple times much more than whatever we have done till now because there will be applications of differential calculus there will be applications of integral calculus because differentiation and integration are playing a very very important role in the studies of motion because in the next class we are going to start with instantaneous velocity instantaneous acceleration and their applications in different consequences of motion 
so hopefully children in this particular idea you have successfully done with what we have studied and uh, you have gone through the entire class with proper attention such that in the next class when we'll starting with non-uniform motion there should not be any lack of clarity or any lacuna from your side of understanding still if you have some problem write back to us and we'll be getting back to you very soon so keep learning keep studying well and stay fit and fine we'll be coming back to very you very soon and we are signing out today thank you everybody